In this video for Math 98, we'll be covering problems on homework number 2 that covers section 11.3. This is like problems 1 through 8 on the homework, and the topic is inverse variation and inverse proportion. You might recall from our last video about direct variation. We use the terms y varies directly as x. Sometimes we use the word y varies linearly directly as x meaning y equals k times x. And y varies quadratic directly as x squared is y equals k times x squared. In these cases, as one value, x, went up, the other value went up also. As x went down, the other value went down. Whether it went up in a linear fashion or a quadratic f fashion depended on the situation. If y varies directly as x and y1 equals k times x1 and y2 equals k times x2. Then we divide both sides of this equation by x1 to get y1 over x1 equal to k. And we divide both sides of this equation by x2 to get y2 over x2 equal to k. Since k is a constant of variation or proportionality, we could say that y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. And this was useful to show direct linear variation. Now, not all variation is direct. Now, let's look at an example. Suppose you have to drive 120 miles. If you drive faster, the time it takes you to get to your 120-mile destination will decrease. Alternatively, if you drive slower, the time it takes for you to increase. So in this situation, one variable, the time, it takes you to drive, and another variable, the rate at which you're driving, are not directly related. In other words, as you, the rate you drive increases, the time actually decreases. And as the rate you drive decreases, the time actually increases. This type of variation, which we can represent in this problem, by the way, as distance equals rate times time. So if I solve this equation, for time by dividing both sides by r, I get this. Or if I solve this equation for r, dividing both sides by t, I get this. And since our distance is 120, look at these equations. t equals 120 over r, and r equals 120 over t. Now, these are not in the form y equals k times x. Notice the variable is in the denominator. This is a different type of variation called inverse variation. So here's a definition. If there is a constant k such that x times y equals k or y equals k over x, we say y varies inversely as x. The k is called a constant of variation. In the ab above example we were using, t varies inversely as r or r varies inversely as t. In general, we can say that y varies inversely as x is y equals k over x to the n. Now, in the example above, n was 1, but it doesn't have to be that way. Another way to write this is x to the n times y equals k. So let's look at some practical examples of how to use this. So here's an example. Set up and solve an inverse proportion and identify the constant of variation k. A batch of stew serves 45 people. When the servings are 2 thirds cup per person, how many people X can be served if the servings are increased to 1 cup per person? So I'm going to define some variables where X is the number of people served and Y is the serving size. Now, this definitely is inverse variation, not only because the problem says so, but just think about it. If a smaller serving size will feed more person than a larger serving size. So as serving size increases, number of people that can be served decreases. So my first method is to use the inverse variation relationship, y equals k over x. Now, I know when x equals 45, when y equals 2 thirds. So I can write down 2 thirds equals k over 45. All right. So now, 
I can um, cross multiply and that would give me 90 equals 3k and k equals 30. So my constant of variation is 30. Okay. So if I want to know when the serving size is 1 cup, so when y equals 1 cup, what's my value of x? Well, it's pretty easy to solve this equation right here. When y equals 1, I get this equation right here, and that, of course, gives me x equals 30. So you could have 30 people served. Now notice, as the serving size increased, the number of people you could serve did decrease. So this was inverse variation. Now, there's another way to do this that doesn't involve finding that constant of variation k. Sometimes I just like to do that. I found that here. But another way to do this is to use this idea. For paired data, x1, y1, and x2, y2, being inversely proportional means x1 times y1 equals k and x2 times y2 equals k. And again, since that k is a constant of variation, it means that these two numbers multiplied together are equal. So, or you could write it this way. So what I could do in my case is I know since x is the number of people served, I'll go back and look at that, and y is the serving size, I know that I have 45 people served when the serving size is 2 thirds a cup. And I have x people served. That's what I want to solve here, right? x people served when it's 1 serving size. So what do we have here? Well, what we can do is we can say, all right, if this is x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2, then I can use this little relationship x1 times y1, 45 times 2 thirds, equals x2 times y2, which is x times 1, which I'll just write as x. Now, 45 times 2 thirds, you will see is 30. So I get the same answer. So you can use either of these methods when encountering this type of problem on WebAssign. Let's do another example. So set up and solve an inverse proportion and identify the constant of variation k. At $40 per ticket, an athletic office can sell out a 75,000-seat stadium. In order to maintain the same total revenue, how many tickets would have to be sold at $64? So here we have $40 per ticket. They will sell all 75,000 seats. If the price goes up, there's probably some of these people who say, whoa, that's too expensive and you won't sell as many seats. So again, we see an inverse proportional relationship. As price goes up, number of people attending or number of people at the game will decrease. So let's let x equal number of people in the stadium. And let's let y equal the cost per ticket. Now, I'm going to do this both ways. First way, I'm going to find this constant of variation k. So I know that when we have $40 tickets, that I'm going to sell all 75,000 seats. So I have $40, because that's my cost, equals k over 75,000. Now, multiplying both sides by 75,000, I get 40 times 75,000 equals k. I'm going to run to my calculator here, because that's a pretty big number. So I'll turn my calculator on. Now 40 times 75,000, whoops, okay, hold on, 40 times 75,000. So K is, wow, that looks like 3 million right there. Okay, so now I can write down the equation, Y equals 3 million divided by x. Okay? So, now what? Well, I know that my tickets are going to be $64. So $64 equals 3 million divided by x. Move this up a little. 
Multiply both sides by x, I get 64x equals 3 million. And if I divide both sides by 64, again, I'll use my calculator. 3 million divided by 64 equals 46,875. So in order for the amount of money to be the same, they would need to sell 46,875 tickets. Now let's do this problem the inverse proportion way. Again, let's go back. X is the number of people in the stadium. Y is the cost of the tickets. So my first problem, I had 75,000 people in the stadium when it was $40 a ticket. In the second problem, I didn't know how many people would be in the stadium. We'll call that X when it was $64 a ticket. Now, using inverse proportions, I could say this is X1, this is Y1, this is X2, this is Y2. So I'm just going to multiply X1 times Y1, 75,000 times 40, and that's going to equal 64 times X. If you do this arithmetic, once again, you'll notice you end up with the same exact answer, 46,875. Now, I don't really care which method you use your problems. I think it's important to see that you can do it both ways. But let's try another one. And this time, I'd like you to try this yourself and restart the video when you're ready. Jeff takes six hours to bike if he goes at a rate of 15 miles per hour. If he goes at the same distance at 25 miles per hour, how long will it take him? So let's do it this way again. I'm going to let x be the rate of Jeff and y to be the time it takes him, it takes to ride. So I'm going to use this y equals k over x again. And let's see. So I know that when his rate is 15 miles per hour, that his time is 6 hours. So I know that 6 equals k over 15. Multiplying both sides by 15, I get 6 times 15 equals k. And 6 times 15 is going to be 90. So k is 90. That found my constant of variation there. Now I can write my equation 90 over x. So now I can answer the question, what if the rate is 25? Well, if the rate is 25, then y is equal to 90 divided by 25. And 90 divided by 25 is not a whole number. It's 3.6, and that's 3.6 hours for him to bike his route. Now, alternatively, we could do this with ordered pairs again. Because I've defined x to be the rate at which Jeff is going, I know that when he goes 15 miles per hour, it takes him 6 hours. And I know when he goes x miles per hour, it takes him 25. I'm sorry, when he goes 25 miles per hour, I don't know how much time it will take him. I'll call that y. Okay, so again, I can do 15 times 6 equals 25 times y. If you do this, you'll notice you get 90 equals 25y, which, of course, 90 over 25 is equal to y, or 3.6. So either way, you can solve inverse proportions. Now, in real world, often you don't know whether you have direct or indirect variation, or neither. So how do you tell? Well. For data x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, you have direct variation if you could take x over y, uh, y over x, and y2 over x2, whether it's the power 1 or the power n, and that gives you direct variation. You have inverse variation, like in the last problem, if you can multiply them together, and that gives you inverse variation. So let's take a look. Let's identify the data as reflecting direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. So how can we do that? Well, if we call this is, so this is about vacation here, length of vacation and total cost. So if I call this x and this y, I'm going to take a look at this, which is x1, and this y1, and this x2, and this y2. So if I were looking for direct variation, I know that I can divide 
y1 over x1. It's going to give me 510 over 3. So what is 510 over 3? Let's um, do that. That's 170. Is that the same thing as y2 over x2, which is 1360 over 8? That also is 170. Since these are equal, I know that this is direct variation. So this is direct variation right here. Okay? Now, this, by the way, this 170 is my constant of variation. Because think about it. y over x has to equal k. So I could write this down as y equals 170 times x. Okay, so that is kind of our situation there. Now, let's look at another one. Let's suppose you, so we want to identify the data as reflecting direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. So let's suppose you buy a pass to a gym, and you know, you just say, hey, I've bought a pass to a gym, and it cost me you know, $60, and you can use it as many times as you want, or something like that. Maybe you've done this in your life. So let's suppose you buy this pass to the gym and you've only used it two times. And that the cost per use is $26. But if you use the same pass ten times, the cost per use is $520. So let's check inverse and direct variation. So again, let's call time used x and cost per use y. And I'll make this x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So let's look for direct variation. To look for direct variation, I'm going to look at y1 over x1 and y2 over x2. So let's just try that. 26 over 2. So $26 over 2 equals 13. And y2 is 520 over 10. Well, that's certainly not equal to 13. So this is not direct variation. What about inverse variation? Well, remember there, x1 times y1. Well, let's try that. 2 times 26. So what is 2 times 26? 2 times 26 is 52. And how about x2 times y2? That's 10 times 520. And that's also 52. Since these are equal, this is inverse variation. And by the way, x1 times y1 and x2 times y2 had to equal that constant of proportionality k, so you know x times y has to equal 52, or y equals 52 over x. Okay, so there is some situation that I can use. If neither of these worked, then you, of course, have neither. Now, let's look at one last problem, similar to a problem on WebAssign. The intensity of light relative to the distance from its source is described by the equation y equals k over d squared, where y is the intensity of light and d is the distance of, uh, uh, from the light source. Compare the density of light two feet from the light source with that of the light six feet from the light source. Okay, so if distance equals two, then the intensity of the light is y equals k over 2 squared, or y equals k over 4. Now I'm going to write this as y1, because that will be the intensity when you're only 2 feet from the light. Of course, you're going to have a different intensity when you're 6 feet from the light. You would use y equals k over 6 squared, and I'm going to call that y2, and y2 equals k over 36. Now, it wants me to compare the density of light between these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a ratio to compare the intensity of this light. So that's k over 36 divided by k over 4. If you look at this, k over 36 divided by k over 4, that's going to give you k over 36 times 4 over k. The k's will divide out. 4 goes into 36, so this is 1 to 9. Now what does that mean? That means the intensity when you're closer is 9 times as powerful as it is 
when you're further away. So when you're two feet from the light, you're nine times, okay, notice that's Y1 here, you're nine times more intense than when you're six feet from the light. I hope you found this video useful.